Hey, um, so I'm about to share something new, but just to kind of frame it a little bit. I probably said this in the last video that I posted here, but since most of my poems go up on Button Poetry's channel, um, I don't use my own channel that much, or I haven't been. I do, however, have some plans for um, this coming year, um, including like a series that should kick off pretty shortly. But before any of that stuff is released, um, I just wanted to do a little test run um, of my setup in front of a couple different backdrops. And so... I figured one way to do that would be to share this piece, which <laughs> never really found a home anywhere. Um, it isn't really a spoken word poem. It isn't really an essay or a speech. Um, it's just kind of like a specific thing that I wanted to say. And I tried to let the content drive the form of it. <laughs> and the form that it ended up taking um, was that of a parody of a very specific 90s stand up comedy routine. Um, Jeff Foxworthy's You Might Be a Redneck If... Dot, dot, dot. And so the piece is written to kind of mimic that, you know, early 90s stand-up delivery. Um, but it's about something really serious. And actually, like, memorizing it and turning it into a performance art piece just didn't really seem to make a whole lot of sense. So I figured I'll just share it here to give it some kind of little home. Um, I also will include the full text at my website. And hopefully, you know, it can be useful to someone in some way. <clears throat> So this is called, you might be an authoritarian if, dot, dot, dot. <clears throat> wow. It is so great to be here. It's just amazing to be back. Thank you all so much. I love being back here in the United States. Real quick, who here is from the United States? Yeah, you know what's up. See, I was born and raised here, so, so naturally I grew up around a lot of people with authoritarian personalities. Um, and some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you don't, though, well, people with authoritarian personalities have a strong desire for order, right? A fear of difference, a fear of outsiders. This fear makes authoritarians look for strong, decisive leaders who can sometimes become de facto father figures who are all about hierarchy, discipline, conformity, following the rules and enforcing those rules with violence. And I'm not a social scientist, right? I'm using the word authoritarian here, but you could imagine a Venn diagram of authoritarianism and fascism fascism and far-right nationalism and whatever term you use, you'd be pointing in the direction of the thing we're actually talking about. And of course, you know, authoritarians exist all over the world, but there are a lot of them here in the U.S. And if you've never met one, you might not catch it right away, right? In fact, you might be an authoritarian yourself and not know it. So I figured tonight I would share a few tips and clues that might help you figure out whether you might be an authoritarian. <clears throat> For example, if you see a group of marchers protesting police brutality and your very first thought is, what a bunch of whiners, or they just want attention, or get a job, you might be an authoritarian. See, authoritarians often assume all protesters are paid protesters or drugged out hippies or ignorant kids who don't know how the world works because authoritarians can't imagine anyone actually being upset about this wonderful ordered status quo we have if you hear someone say white people maybe shouldn't use the n-word but you hear it as i think the government should lock you up for saying any words i don't like you might be an authoritarian because authoritarians, when presented with a moral or ethical argument, tend to only be able to process it through the lens of laws, rules, and regulations. Like, if you're perfectly okay with ICE agents tearing families apart, targeting activists, deporting people who have never known any other home, traumatizing children, all because, you know, the law is the law, or they should have followed the rules, you might be an authoritarian. If you hear a story about a man using his position of power to badger and pressure a woman into sex, but rather than saying, yes, that is wrong and should be condemned, you say, yes, but you know, that's not technically illegal. You might be an authoritarian. Authoritarians love black or white, all or nothing propositions. Like, if you think the Me Too movement means that no man can ever again say anything to any woman ever because that's easier for you than just, you know, striving to be more respectful, 
you might be an authoritarian. Yeah, authoritarians love that like all or nothing stuff, that hyperbole. If you respond to an accusation of racism, not with, I am not racist, but with, I am the least racist person in the history of the universe, you might be an authoritarian. If you say that your political enemies aren't just wrong, but that they hate our country, that they hate freedom, you might be an authoritarian. And of course, hyperbole isn't just about words. It's also about actions. If you believe that an acceptable punishment for shoplifting or running away or having trace amounts of drugs in your bloodstream or just talking back to a police officer is immediate extrajudicial execution, you might be an authoritarian. Authoritarians are also really, really good at projecting their own flaws and insecurities onto others. So if you assume a man calling out misogyny is just virtue signaling because you're a man and you would never call out misogyny so any man who does must be doing it for nefarious purposes you might be an authoritarian if you think scientists warning us that climate change is a threat to human civilization are just you know doing it to get famous or for the grant money but you have total faith in the politicians whose campaigns are funded by fossil fuel companies saying that climate change is a myth you might be an authoritarian. Authoritarians, even poor and powerless ones, are drawn to power and trust the powerful implicitly, right? The poor person getting welfare is greedy. The rich person with more money than he could ever spend is aspirational. The public health expert saying that we should wear masks to protect one another must have an ulterior motive, but your boss telling you to go to work and clock in as though everything was normal is the American dream. Again and again, when the conflict is between those who hurt people and those who get mad about those who hurt people, authoritarians will never address the hurt, only the divisiveness of calling it out. The PC police run amok. The cancel culture that won't just roll over and let them do whatever they want. If you say, I don't hate immigrants or trans people or Muslims on a personal level, I just want them all to look and speak and dress and act exactly like I do and also not live in my neighborhood or go to my child's school, you might be an authoritarian. If you think everyone should speak the same language and it just happens to be the only language you speak, you might be an authoritarian if you only understand choice through the lens of power, empathy through the lens of the law, value through the lens of conformity. You might be an authoritarian. And there's no punchline here. There is no punchline here. Authoritarianism robs us as a society of our ability to create a more beautiful, more open, freer world. It hurts people. It is an ideology rooted in fear and greed and violence and must be resisted in our politics, our institutions, our interpersonal relationships, and in ourselves. Because it isn't just tyrants and dictators who can be authoritarians. It's something that lives in us, the people. And it is our job to kill it. It is our job not to stand up for power but to stand up to power, to stand up for one another, to work together, to build relationships, to do all the things that those in power, those with authority have tried to stomp out for generations. That's my time. I hope you all have a wonderful night.